Hey guys, this is Austin. You may have caught our Building the Ultimate PS4 video, where we may have gone just a little bit over the top. However, this time, well, I mean, clearly we kept things completely rational and in no way overkill whatsoever. To start out with, we have something simple. This is the Seagate Game Drive SSD. Now this will work on both the Xbox One S as well as the original Xbox One, and the idea is pretty simple. This is a USB-based SSD. Unlike the PS4, which you can easily swap out the stock drive for an SSD, with the Xbox, the internal drive is pretty much what you get. The real advantage with an SSD like this is going to be in performance. So you still have the standard hard drives inside your Xbox One, but not only are games going to load faster from this guy, but it's also going to give you an additional 512 gigabytes of storage. So one thing to know is that you don't actually have to use a game drive for the Xbox. It supports any USB 3.0 drive that's at least 256 gigabytes. But for 200 bucks, the game drive is not a bad deal. But what if that's not enough? That's where a hub comes in. So this is only going to work on the original Xbox One, but not only does it give you an additional two USB ports, but it also will let you install a full extra hard drive. So inside, what we're getting here is something that actually should match pretty well with the Xbox One. Installing this guy should be as simple as just lining it up with the USB port on the side. And... So right out of the box, it doesn't really add a lot of bulk to the Xbox. So you're getting those additional USB ports over here, but the real star of the show is what you can actually put inside this guy. Pop open the back here, and you'll see our spot for a two and a half inch hard drive. Now in theory, you could also put an SSD in here. However, since we already have an SSD, I feel like we gotta go and max the storage on this guy. So to make sure that we're getting the most out of the Xbox, we have an additional two terabyte hard drive. So we just need to attach this bracket, and the drive should just pretty much slide into place. All right, so, as simple as that, at least in theory, we added an additional two terabytes of hard drive space to our Xbox. That's clearly not enough. So that's where the modular data bank comes in. With this guy, we can add an additional four terabytes of capacity to our Xbox. So inside the box, this is also fairly straightforward, but it's gonna require maybe just a little bit more work because unlike dropping a small hard drive on the side, this guy goes right on top. <laughs> All right, this is already looking goofy. Unlike the Media Hub, this guy is actually going to live on top of the Xbox. And that's because it supports full desktop three and a half inch hard drives. Wait, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. How is it attached? Is it like magnetic? Wow, that's not magnetic. <laughs> so don't put your Xbox upside down with the data bank on, but it is being held in by something, whether it's like adhesive or magnet or something. All we need to do is just take off this top piece and we can get at the three and a half inch drive bay. Installing this should be pretty straightforward. All we need to do is line it up with our drive bay, slide it all the way back so it's fully seated, and that should give us an additional four terabytes of capacity with our Xbox One. I am already really proud of how ridiculous this looks and we're not even done yet, because next we have a intercooler. Now, if you remember from the PS4 video, we found that these really don't add a whole lot of value. It marginally might cool your PS4 down just a touch. However, the Xbox One does have a very different cooling solution. Essentially, right below this grate here is a very large fan. So in theory, giving that more airflow could help, or it could just be a complete waste of money. Supposedly, this will give us a 30% drop in temperature, which I find kind of hard to believe, but at least it does have a couple of temperature sensors that will tell us not only what the air temperature is outside the Xbox, but also inside. So once the Xbox is cooled off after you're done gaming, for example, in theory, the fan should shut off automatically. So on the bottom, we've got a fairly substantial looking fan, but beyond that, it pretty much should just drop right into place over the Xbox. So the power of the cooler, it's as simple as just using the included micro USB cable to take up one of our USB ports on the back, which is kind of taking up all of our USB ports, but thankfully, we have a bunch more up front now. So to take the ridiculous one step farther, we have the Nyko charge base. So what this is going to let us do is charge two Xbox One controllers on top of this monstrosity. The only difference between this and normal controller is that this comes with a separate backplate. So once we pop it on, you'll see the contact for the batteries on the back, which means that once we drop it onto the dock, it should automatically charge. There we go. That's a proper Xbox One setup right here. Uh, what am I doing? To put the ultimate Xbox One over the top, we have the XIM4. Now this little adapter is going to allow you to use a mouse and keyboard on a console, specifically the Xbox One. And here we have the XIM itself, which kind of looks like a glorified USB hub. So up front we have a couple of USB ports as well as one more on the back and micro USB. So with this, in theory, we will be up and running with our Xbox One with a mouse and keyboard. 
or we could have just got a PC. So after about an hour of fiddling with this to try to get it all to work, we now have mouse and keyboard support for Xbox One. This is not the most elegant solution. What you have to do is you have to run an original Xbox One controller into this guy, a mouse and keyboard into it, and then it goes out via USB. And it also just disconnected. Wow, did it really just break? <laughs> so once we get everything up and running, it works pretty well. So the way the XIM4 works is that you actually pair it with your phone and you can sync over different profiles. So right now I'm playing the original Titanfall, but there are profiles for most games for PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One. And something I appreciate about this is that there's really not a lot of latency. Now sure, you can notice maybe a touch if you're really paying attention, but as far as I'm concerned, it feels like I'm just playing on a PC. But is this worth all the extra complexity and hassle? I'm not so sold. I think that it's a useful thing if you're trying to build the ultimate Xbox One, it totally works. But it's a lot of extra hassle, and honestly, if you're just doing this, buy a PC? So, takeaways from the ultimate Xbox setup. First of all, this is obviously overkill. You shouldn't do this to your Xbox, it's dumb. But there are some interesting bits and pieces in here. So to start with the Antec X1 cooler, it's sort of interesting. It works well, but it's not useful. The Xbox One is so overbuilt with cooling that this is really not going to make a significant difference. As far as getting a charge station for the Xbox, it's not really that useful. I mean, it is nice to be able to just drop an Xbox controller on, but there are other options that are not mounted on top of the controller that make it look super ridiculous. The hard drive situation is a little bit more complicated. So the Xbox only supports a maximum of two additional drives on top of what's inside. So right now we have the four terabyte drive connected and we could get the SSD or we could get the two terabyte drive all in together, but it's only going to see two of the three at any given time. Now, unless you really need all seven terabytes at once, it's not really a big issue. And honestly, I do really appreciate how easy it is to expand your storage with the Xbox, whether you want just lots of space with a normal hard drive or a really fast SSD. So what do you guys think about this totally not overkill Xbox One setup? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys want links to any of this stuff, they will be in the description. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.